Hey guys, my name is Miguel Souza and today I'll be showing you how can you turn your GoPro footage from this into this in just some quick steps. Cue it on. Alright, so first thing you need to do is you go to your GoPro and you scroll up and on this video performance resolutions, well, just go ahead and select maximum video performance because if we're talking about what's the best settings for you to record on your GoPro, you might as well not be using standard video performance. So select that, get out of there and forget it forever. Getting into resolution and frame rates, we all say, okay, if your GoPro records at 10K, record at 10K. If it records at 240 frames a second, record at the maximum frame rate, at the maximum quality, but it, it really depends. I mean, it depends on what you're doing with the video. If you do not have much of a computer to edit the videos on, or if you edit the videos on your phone, which might not be the best of the best, you might just be happy with a 1080p, it's more than happy for you, a 2.7k. But if you're just like me and you want to post some videos on YouTube, or maybe you want to do a promo and want to have the best out of the best quality of your GoPro, maybe go to the resolution and put it on the maximum it can go. In my case, it's 5.3k and it's the resolution I record all my videos. Now, talking about frame rate, it really depends on what you're doing with your footage. If you're gonna use it for slow-mo, you're gonna slow it down, maybe yes, do record at 60 frames a second, 120, 240, as maximum as you have a frame rate, because then you can slow it down and it looks just buttery smooth. Now, if you're just gonna record a POV like I do, and I'm trying to give you the best settings for a POV, you might choose like, 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second because we as humans see the world with some motion like for example this camera you're just watching the video right now is recording at 24 frames a second and when I wave my hand on it you can see some motion blur see in between the fingers you can't really see it that's called motion blur and this is what happens when you record at 60 frames a second see my hand all the motion blur is gone it doesn't seem real Now, back at my 24 beautiful frames a second, when which is the human perception of the world is with this motion blur, you should actually think, what are you gonna record? I mean, 30 frames a second and 24 frames a second is the way we see the world, so it's the frame rate you should be using if you don't want to slow it down. So, 24 frames a second is always my choice when recording POVs on the trails because you get that buttery smooth like motion blur when you're going down the trail. But I have to say, if you use 30 frames a second, you lose a bit of that motion blur, but you get a bit more definition. It stays a little bit more crisp. But pro tip, if you record at 24 frames a second, like the least frames you record, the faster it seems that you're going, okay? If you want to look that you're going very fast, record at 24 frames a second. It makes the footage look a little faster. On to lens choice. My opinion, record as wide as you can record. If your GoPro does 10K at super view, do record at 10K at super view. If, for example, in my case, I'm recording at 5.3K super view, which doesn't actually crop the view, the field of view. If you are on a GoPro Hero 9, I believe, if you're recording at 5.3K, even because you are at super view, it crops a little bit the field of view and you don't get all the sensor coverage. Why? Because if you're recording wider, well, you're recording with the GoPro, you want to record a POV, you want it to be as wide as possible, you want to show what's in front of you, you want to show your handlebars, you want to show, imagine you're running, you want to show your hands running, it's a point of vision. Our eyes are very wide, so I would encourage you to record at the widest 
field of view you have on your GoPro. If that's wide, well, do record it wide. If that's super view, if that's mega view, just record at the widest you can record. On to the stabilization, or what GoPro calls it, the hyper smooth. It's kind of back again to the field of view because on my case, I always record on standard stabilization because if I go to hyper smooth boost, it really crops in a little bit of my frame. And as I told you, I like to have it as wide as possible to show as much of the handlebars and the scenery I'm riding on. And I have to say, if you record at super, how do you call it? Super smooth boost, I think you lose a little bit of the how gnarly the trails are, how technical the things are, because it's so smooth, it seems that it is on a gimbal, and you lose the feel for the trail. So I think hyper smooth is interesting because back on the old days when the GoPros didn't have stabilization, all the footage was super shaky, you couldn't see what was going on. But now that things are so, so smooth with hyper smooth boost, or mega or hyper, whatever it is, I think you should kind of back it down and, and give some more feel for the trail. If it is very technical and you only have hyper smooth standard, it shows how technical it is. If you have the boost, it, it just seems to be a highway. So I always go with hyper smooth standard. That's my opinion. Now, getting out of basic settings, if you want to get the best of the best quality out of your GoPro, you should enable Pro Tune. All GoPros have Pro Tune, some have more limited options, the newer ones have better options, but you should always enable ProTune, because instead of leaving the GoPro to do whatever job she wants, it's not always the best solution. So enable ProTune and have a little more control of the scenery. Now, in ProTune, you have a thing called bitrate. Bitrate is the amount of bits your image is composed by. If you have it at a standard, which is what comes on a preset of the GoPro, it's bitrate standard, you're gonna have a whole less bits per inch of your screen. So guess what? The image is gonna be a lot worse. If you're recording at 5.3K at bitrate standard, it's gonna compress so much that 5.3K that you're gonna end up with a same quality as recording at a full HD at 1080p at high bitrate because it doesn't have enough bitrate to record the 5.3K, it's gonna compress it a lot, it's gonna be horrible. So if you wanna get the best out of the best, go to bitrate, choose high bitrate and leave it on forever. On to the shutter, uh, I mean, Shutter should be always manual, but since I'm recording POVs on trails which have huge shadows, have very dark shadows, have very bright highlights, and then sometimes I'm in the woods, sometimes I'm in the open area with harsh sun hitting, and I want to have fun while I'm riding. I don't. I, I want to have a preset that I set the GoPro on, I just click a button, and GoPro does its job. So you should, by theory, have the shutter on manual and have it very specific for the situation you're in. But, you know, I want to click a button, I want the GoPro to do his job, so I think leaving the shutter on auto is more than enough for what you're gonna need. Now, leaving the shutter on auto means that you need to go to the EV compensation, which is how GoPro exposes to underexpose or overexpose to the situations you're gonna face. And that's the very important thing we're gonna look here. It's the EV comp. So let's suppose you leave the shutter on auto and you leave everything for GoPro to do. If you're gonna set the EV comp to minus two, you're gonna tell the GoPro to underexpose to every situation. Let's imagine GoPro is gonna look at a scenario which is very bright and she's gonna expose to a standard. But if you think, and everybody knows that GoPro overexposes a lot, you're gonna say, okay, Maybe underexposed for everything you think is well exposed. And you're gonna put minus two and GoPro is un going to underexpose all of your footage. If you think you're gonna be on a very dark spot and you need to overexpose things, maybe set it to plus two and GoPro will take a standard and will expose it to plus two. Now, what's my personal opinion on that? I normally ride on minus one. Now it depends a lot because if you're running on a sunny day, normally in, in below trees and stuff, you have very harsh shadows. 
which the shadows become very dark and the highlights become very bright. And what I'm telling GoPro is to expose for the bright side because you always want to expose for the bright side because if you see an image, let, let's be honest, if you see an image that has the highlights or the whites completely blown out, you're going to be like, ah, this is a trash image. If you see an image that has a lot of blacks, you're going to say, okay, it's not very well exposed, but it's seeable. So that's what we're doing right here. We're trying to tell GoPro on very sunny days to expose to minus one for the EV Com, which is going to bring a lot more detail on those highlights even though it's gonna put the shadows a little darker, but I think there's no big of a problem because GoPro overexposes everything. So on sunny days, if you're riding on trails with many trees and many highlights coming from the trees, which is the bright lights, maybe you should choose minus one. If you're riding on a cloudy day like it is today, normally the shadows aren't as black and the highlights aren't as blown out. So maybe use zero of an EV comp or even minus 0.5. And I have to say, sometimes when the sun is very, very harsh and I have very, you know those huge pine trees that make the trail look so dark and then from the sudden you get out and there's a little glance of a highlight coming in from the trees. Some of those times I set the GoPro EV comp to minus 1.5 just to, again, expose to the bright side and not have the highlights completely blown out. Now, that's again. Recording inside with a good lighting setup, record at zero EV comp. If it is very, very cloudy, maybe zero to minus 0 0.5 EV comp. If the day is very bright and you're recording at places with many shadows, minus one, minus 1, minus 1.5. Standard on a GoPro comes the white balance on automatic, which, well, I have to say it doesn't do a good job because if it is sunny outside and GoPro is trying to expose for all different kinds of things, it's going to expose for shadows, for, for this, this and that, and then you twist it a little down and twist it up, and it just looks horrible. Sometimes it looks too yellow, sometimes it looks too blue, sometimes it looks too green, too magenta. You shouldn't leave it on auto. Now, if you do not want to get into the more technical part, which I'm going to explain right now, which is the Kelvins, and choose the right Kelvins for the day you're in, you might choose the normal standard presets, which are sunny, cloudy, tungsten and fluorescent. And I think you'll be good to go. If it is very sunny outside, put it on sunny and you'll be good to go. If it is cloudy, put it on cloudy. You might not have the micro adjustments to have the best of the best quality, but you're going to get a very good quality. So if you do not want to get into Kelvins, just choose the already made presets and you're good to go. Now, if you want to get very in-depth into it, let me explain. This is a chart of the Kelvins throughout the day. Not really throughout the day, but more throughout like whether it is sunny, whether it is cloudy or whether it is very, very cloudy. Or if you're shooting at sunrise or sunset. Or if you're shooting inside or outside, it just depends on the type of lighting. For example, if you're shooting on a very sunny day, you should have between 5,000 Kelvins and 5,500 Kelvins. Why? Because that's the way the Kelvins compensate the light of the sun and transform it into a very uh, flat, balanced color, which, well, as you can see. Now, if you're recording at a more cloudy day, you might use like 6,000 or 65,000. And if you're recording in sides, which most of the lights are LEDs or tungsten, you might be using like, I don't know, 4,000 to 3,000 Kelvins. Now, I have a test here for you to see, which I recorded on a day which is very sunny. And we know that very sunny is 5,000 Kelvins. And I recorded one at 4,000 and one at 6,000. And you can see when you put it at 6,000 on a very sunny day, it looks a little bit yellowish. And when you record in 4000 on a very sunny day, it looks a little bit bluish. So, well, you have the chart there. If you learn the chart, I'm not going to explain. I could stay here hours long talking about Kelvins and how to expose for different situations. But there you go. There you have the chart. If you need more things, just get a careful look at it and you'll be good to go. Otherwise, just go to the presets of the GoPro and put sunny or cloudy or inside. 
Moving on to ISO, as I told you, I like to go on the trail and I like to have fun. I should put the ISO at manual to actually have the best quality I can from the footage I'm getting. But, you know, I want to have fun, I want to go to the trails, I want to click a button and let GoPro do its job. Now, what I do, I leave minimum ISO at 100, maximum at 6400, and I think it's good to go. If you think 6400 is too noisy, maybe put it at 3300, no, I mean 3200, and you'll be more than good to go. If you have your EV comp set correctly, you'll be good to go. On to sharpness, my personal opinion, go to there, leave it on low and forget about it. Never touch it again. I think the sharpness of the GoPro or any sharpness in body of the cameras, if it is Canon, if it is Sony, if it is Blackmagic, Red, anything, you shouldn't use sharpness of, on the own camera. You should record it as flat as possible in terms of sharpness. And then if you need to add sharpness, add it on your editing software. It's gonna look so much better. This is a test on the high sharpness and low sharpness. I always record on a low sharpness. I think it looks the most natural, so that's my opinion. Now, on to color. I, it really depends on are you gonna grade the video or are you gonna leave it as is? If you're gonna leave it as is, record at natural GoPro color. If you're gonna grade the video, record at a flat profile, which when you get to the computer and record it at a flat, you think like, what have I done? The colors are so flat. I have no shadows. I have no highlights. It's just like, it seems washed. But that's a, a very flat file, like a C log or an S log or a not very a raw, but kind of a log profile on which you can grade over it and have a lot of detail on the shadows, highlights and midtones. And then you grade it and it stays like beautiful. Now, if you're not gonna grade it, set the colors to natural because vivid colors are just the worst. They're too saturated. I don't recommend anybody using it. Last but not least, let's talk about audio. I do believe that the auto wind removal from the GoPro does an amazing job even in an MP3 quality. No. Because if you were to use the GoPros of like, I don't know, five years ago, it was no auto wind removal. It was horrible. You couldn't record any audio without a windshield. Now, if you want to get the best of the best audio quality from your GoPro, you get a windshield like this. This eliminates any kind of wind noises you might have and it makes your sound much, much crisper. Now, what you want to do if you're using one of these, you might go to raw audio and select it to high, which is gonna give you a very high quality wave file on which you can edit on post-production and have a very nice audio quality. And you can turn the auto wind removal off, which when you're talking on a GoPro and descending a trail is gonna make it sound much, much better. Now, if the sound quality is a little better today is because I Oh, there's, ooh, very good, enough. because I'm using the windshield. And to finish up, I, I know you guys want to know, like, but please tell me what are the best settings I can have on my GoPro. Just give me numbers and, and positions that I can have the best things and I and put it on my GoPro. And then it looks cinematic and battery smooth and this and this and that. I mean, you, you really can't. I can't really give you that because not because I do not want to, but because the best settings depends on what are you gonna use the files for? Is it gonna be slow motion? Is it not gonna be slow motion? Is it a sunny day? Is it a cloudy day? How's the trail? Is it with too much highlights and shadows? Is it a, a outside trail that doesn't have trees and everything is kind of always sunny? Uh, are you gonna record on the inside? I, I don't know, you know? But okay, since you guys wanna know, let's put a hypothetic scenario on which I'm recording with a GoPro on the visor mount of the uh, helmet. It's a very sunny day, there's no wind. I'm recording on a trail which has many harsh shadows and highlights because of the forest. And then I go to some jumps on the outside which is very sunny. I'll give you the definitions and specs for that, let me see. 
for that specific case, but not all cases, for just that specific case, if you're recording on a case like that, well, you should use 5.3K, 24 frames a second, lens at super view, hyper smooth at standard, bitrate at high, but that should always be high, shutter at auto, the EV comp should be at minus one or minus 1.5, really, depending on the highlights, it is too sunny or just sunny, uh, white balance at 5000 Kelvins, minimum ISO at 100, if you want to have the max ISO at like, I don't know, 800, 600, 400, because it's too sunny, uh, sharpness always at low, color at flat, so that's just if you're gonna grade it. If you're gonna grade it, yeah, color at flat, you're gonna get the best resolution ever. Raw audio on at high, just for you to then post-processing uh, factor, just have the best out of the best, equalize it on a parametric equalizer and have the best of the best. Use a windshield so you do not have to use wind uh, removal sounds and yeah. Those are the best settings for the GoPro in that case. But if you watch the video all the way to here, you know that the best specs depends on your knowledge and what's the day outside. So, on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys have your specs on the GoPro sorted out finally. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. Hope you guys learned something with the video. Hope you guys have some better POVs out there. And I'll see you guys next time.